This is the Weekly Riff with Anthony Avina, episode number two, presented by On Request Magazine, one of the leading online entertainment magazines on the web, a magazine by the fans, for the fans. Today's podcast is brought to you by The Book Depository, one of the UK's leading providers of affordable books. The Book Depository has a wide selection of books available for purchase for cheap prices. Check out the link in the description of our podcast to learn more about the site and see this week's current chart chart toppers. Hello everyone. For those of you new to this podcast, my name is Anthony Avina. I am a writer and YouTuber uh, with a wide growing fan base. This is the second episode of On Request Magazine's Weekly Riff. In this podcast, which is presented by the magazine itself, we talk about the leading trends, entertainment news, what's popular on the web, and more. Since this this podcast is in part affiliated with me as well, I will be talking about the latest in my world, whether it's writing, YouTube, or more. We're going to talk about everything that's trending right now, and in the course of this podcast, I hope you'll follow along with me as we explore why things are popular right now, what makes them popular, and what uh, contributes to their popularity. So for the most part, what I'm saying is that this is an entertainment podcast. Uh, just taking everything that's, you know, chart-topping, music-wise, books, movies, television, even YouTube, video games, all that stuff. We're going to be talking about all of that, my personal life, or my books, I'll sometimes do excerpts for my books, um, and I hope you guys will enjoy it with me. The second episode of the Weekly Riff is going to be special because we're going to be discussing On Request Magazine's Best of 2014 list. This list is going to span the entire 2014 year. This topics can include television, movies, books, video games, um, YouTube, all of that. And we're going to go through the list, which you can also find the written version of on our magazine, www.onrequestmagazine.com. And all the links for everything from the magazine and for me personally will be in the description of this podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in today, and let's get started. Here is On Request Magazine's Best of 2014 list. Let's start with television. The first thing I'd like to talk about is Sons of Anarchy. This is On Request Magazine's top show of the year. Filled with heartache, angst, and some of the best writing on television, the seventh and final season of the FX drama found our titular hero, Jax Teller, grieving with the loss of his wife and true love, Tara, at the end of last season. Season seven was filled with his mission for revenge for her murder, leading to surprising deaths, tense action, and twists and turns that gave the cast some of the finest performances in the series' history. The final season of SOA is our top-rated show of 2014, and we will sorely miss seeing this amazing show come fall of 2015. Our second hit show of the year has to be Arrow. The hit CW show ended its second season and began its third in 2014. From the second season's intense battle between Deathstroke and Arrow for the lives of the people of Starling City, to the reveal of Oliver's secret identities to some regular cast members, to a powerful third season filled with supervillains, superpowered heroes, and the introduction of one of DC Comics' deadliest characters, Ra's al Ghul, and the League of Assassins. This year has proven DC knows how to make great television. And after the shocking death at the end of Season 3's mid-season finale, 
2015 is sure to hold some amazing performances and great plot devices in the second half of the season. Our next show has got to be The Flash. The CW's freshman DC Comics drama lived up to the hype and became one of the network's top-rated shows. Featuring a stellar performance from a top-notch cast, the drama focuses on the rise of a new hero, The Flash, who uses his metahuman abilities to stop superpowered criminals and seek answers to the mysteries of his life, including the identity of the man truly responsible for his mother's murder. With great Easter eggs from DC Comics and set in the same universe as Arrow, the show has taken the best elements of both Arrow and the CW's own Smallville from years earlier showing that humor and dark plots can go hand in hand when well executed. And the second half of this first season is sure to know that, show that. Keeping in line with the DC lineup, our next show, uh, as far as best hits of 2014, has got to go to Gotham. Fox found a hit new drama this year, and that was Gotham. Focusing on the years before Bruce Wayne would go on to put on the cowl and become Batman, the show instead focuses on James Gordon, a new detective in Gotham who finds himself battling corruption both within and outside of the GCPD. With a partner, Harvey Bullock, who straddles the moral line in a friendship with Bruce Wayne and his guardian Alfred Pennyworth after the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne, Gordon must face down both powerful mobs and gangs and early incarnations of future Batman villains, including a truly brilliant portrayal of Oswald Cobblepot, a.k.a. The Penguin, whose rise to power is well documented on this hit drama's freshman season. Tune in for the second half of the season in early January to see how the fight continues for Gordon. Moving on from the DC side of television, we are now going to get into The Mindy Project. The hit Fox comedy from the hilarious mind of creator Mindy Kaling has produced a stellar series. From the end of the second season, which saw the emergence of one of television's most talked about romances of the year, to the amazing third season that has seen the show evolve from one woman's struggle to find romance to the ups and downs of holding on to that romance once you have it. The show's quirky and high-octane comedic performances from both the main and supporting cast has turned this show into an all-star comedy that we hope is around for years to come. Tuning into some of the more dramatic roles on television, we go to The Affair. The surprise hit drama of the fall definitely belongs to Showtime's The Affair, especially after the recent reveal that The Affair won two Golden Globes for Best Drama and for Best Actress uh, on Television, going to Ruth Wilson, one of the show's top billed actors. Following a unique format of being shown the same events, but from two different perspectives, the show followed two people, both married, who found themselves having a whirlwind love affair, both struggling with personal demons that was poised to drown them in misery. Each sought the affections of one another in hopes of finding something more to life. That affair took some twists and turns, finding the two lovers caught in some serious situations, from drugs and extortion to a murder mystery that is set to be a main aspect of the show that will go well into the second season. This is a great story with lots of twists and turns and some amazing performances from the cast that brought gasps, shock, and tears as well. Our final show of the year has got to go, of course, to AMC's hit apocalyptic drama, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead has seen one of the more emotional years in what is already an intense, gut-wrenching, tearjerker of a show. The second half of season four aired at the beginning of the year, and we were treated to some dramatic performances from the cast, 
who dealt with the ramifications of the governor killing Herschel, a character that easily became the soul of the show, and destroying the prison, separating the group temporarily. From there, we got a terrifying glimpse into the twisted world of Terminus, where a group of cannibal survivors had set up shop to take other people prisoner and kill them for food. The action and horror that ensued during Season 5 has been amazing, but the first half of the season ended tragically, killing off one of the show's most beloved characters, Beth, who also happened to be the last remaining member of Maggie's family, and someone whom fan-favorite character Daryl Dixon has grown close to in Season 4. With the second half of Season 5 looming, we are definitely interested in learning how the group will recover from the loss and where they will head from there. Now let's move on to film. Captain America the Winter Soldier is our first pick for films of 2014. Marvel had two amazing projects this year. The first was the sequel to an established series, Captain America the Winter Soldier. The film followed the first Avenger into the current day, where he found himself working with S.H.I.E.L.D. to take down threats to the world. While working there, Cap found himself adapting to being a man out of his own time, catching up on the things he missed while he was frozen in ice. However, he finds that the organization he trusted has become corrupted from the inside and he, along with Black Widow, go on a quest to root out the corruption and learn the truth behind the plot against them, including who the mysterious Winter Soldier is, and why he's been employed to assassinate key figures through the last few decades. The sequel played out like a political thriller, and was a mix between a Jason Bourne movie and a Marvel property. The events of the film changed the entire landscape of the MCU, and has led to some interesting plot developments within the universe, making it a key film in the development of both the character and the MCU. Our second film is going to be Marvel's second film, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy was definitely a surprise hit this past summer, featuring an all-star cast playing a ragtag group of mercenaries, outlaws, and killers, the film focuses on Marvel's cosmic side, showcasing the adventures of the Guardians of the Galaxy. When a fanatical war criminal known as Ronan the Accuser goes on a quest to retrieve an artifact full of destructive power, outlaw Star-Lord joins Drax the Destroyer, who's on a mission of revenge for the death of his wife and daughter, Gamora, an assassin who betrayed Ronan and her father, they're all the all-powerful Thanos, Rocket Raccoon, and the fan favorite Groot, on a quest to find a way to survive in the chaotic universe, stay out of trouble with the law, and possibly stop the villain from annihilating a planet full of innocent people. This unknown comic took the world by storm to become one of the year's top grossing films of 2014, and it's a must-watch film for us here at Honor Quest Magazine. Next up on our film list is Gone Girl. The most buzzed about drama of the year also had one of the best dramatic plots of the year as well. Gone Girl saw an amazing performance from Ben Affleck and a breakout performance from Rosamund Pike and featured an intriguing plot that hits home with today's high profile criminal cases in our country. After his wife goes missing, a man is found thrust into the public spotlight his every move picked apart and questioned under a microscope by the public. Trying to uncover the truth, fans are led through a long series of emotional and shocking events that halfway through the film features a surprising revelation that no one will see coming. The film is a fantastic adaption of the novel, novel and it is a must-watch film for 2014. Our next pick, Nightcrawler. One of the best performances of the year came from Jake Gyllenhaal, who portrayed a disturbing and creepy man who finds his calling as a nightcrawler 
a news chaser who finds the most gruesome accidents, crime scenes, and more, and fills them, films them up close and personal to sell to the news station. The level of intensity that he brought to the role and the chilling, antisocial behavior he exhibited was so real and uncomfortable that they were nothing short of brilliant in this film. The plot and supporting cast rounded out the film beautifully and brought together an amazing piece of cinema that deserves recognition for the amazing acting, directing, and writing this film exhibited. Our next pick is Not Cool. One of the funniest breakout films of the year was the independent film Not Cool, made by YouTube sensation and visionary Shane Dawson. Part of a competition series from stars called The Chair. The film is a throwback to the days where comedies like American Pie ruled the movie industry. Following a group of kids who return from their freshman year of college for Thanksgiving break, each kid must navigate their various families and social problems. From girlfriends dumping them and facing an entire graduating class that humili humiliated them, the film is filled with an off-the-wall humor that is amazing and has an emotional story filled with self-image struggles and finding love in the most unlikely of hate places. This is a, a phenomenal film and a great comedy that must be watched. It makes us excited for the future film Shane Dawson is sure to produce. Our final pick of the year for films is The Fault in Our Stars. One of the more emotional book adaptions of the year, the film stars Shailene Woodley as Hazel, a cancer patient who falls in love with another survivor of cancer and goes through the emotional toll of struggling with her illness and not wanting, wanting to hurt the man she falls in love with when her life expectancy is so low. The film touched the hearts of millions of people this year and was one of the biggest cry fests that garnered a huge fan base and brought to life one amazing characters that audiences immediately fell in love with. That rounds out the film aspect of our best of list. Now let's move on to video games. One of the top games of 2014 for us here at Honor Quest Magazine was Far Cry 4. This plot for Far Cry 4 followed a young man who brings his mother's ashes to her home country of Kirat in hopes that of being, of being put to rest. However, the man finds himself caught in a civil war between a powerful dictator and a ragtag rebellion whose leadership is in the midst of a power struggle. The action is non-stop, and the never-ending amount of missions and activities is amazing. The first-person experience makes the game that much more interactive, and the graphics are nothing short of breathtaking. Getting to ride on the back of an elephant and paragliding from a plane through the snowy mountain terrains was a huge highlight of the game, and the chaotic world you find yourself thrust in is rich with culture that is felt throughout the entire gaming experience. Far Cry 4 is definitely one of the best games of 2014 and must be played. Our next pick is Watch Dogs. Ubisoft's, Ubisoft's new game may have met with some harsh critiques, but we personally felt that this game had an amazing play. The plot follows a hacker whose family is killed when a job he pulled comes back to haunt him. Seeking to protect the family he has left and get revenge on the people who murdered his niece, the hacker, Aiden, uses a new vigilante persona to get justice through cyber attacks and brutality, uncovering a huge plot in the city of Chicago that fuels a corrupt police department and shady mobsters. Aiden seeks the help of a fellow hackers to uncover the truth and take down the responsible parties. The high-tech plot and third-person shooter experience are amazing, and the visuals were bright and stunning, bringing to mind a gritty noir type of graphic novel. Our next game is The Walking Dead Season 2. One of the best story-driven games of the year 
is Telltale Games' The Walking Dead Season 2. Following the first season's Clementine, players are put into her shoes, forced to make life and death decisions in a matter of seconds that would determine the fates of those around you. High octane drama and the intensity of the decision based plot that changes with every choice you make is just as, as amazing as the show and comic book that it's based upon. One of the best first person shooters of the year is got to be Wolfenstein The New Order. The plot takes a new spin on the series following a gritty plot that finds a new reality in place from the one protagonist B.J. Blaskowitz knows. Waking up in a reality where the Nazis won and have taken over the world after World War II, B.J. must find a group of rebels to help fight the good fight and take down the Nazi regime once and for all, ending the mass slaughter of the human population and ensuring the freedom of all mankind is restored. The game has great graphics, high octane action, and an awesome plot that is both easy to follow and is truly intriguing. Finally, we'd be remiss if we didn't include one of our favorite uh, partners uh, that we frequently use, and that is Nintendo. The hit Nintendo game of the year has got to be the Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 2DS, 3DS, uh, Nintendo 3DS. The hit Nintendo game has taken the world by storm, making it one of the franchise's top games. Featuring characters from Zelda, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario, Pokemon, Metroid, Mega Man, and Pac-Man, the game is a combat-based game that has players attempting to knock the other out using other characters. The game is a, no pun intended, smash hit, and a must-play for any fan of the Nintendo series. That does it for video games. Now let's move on to books. The first book I'd like to mention is Grace Helbig's Grace's Guide, The Art of Pretending to Be a Grown-Up. This book from YouTube, YouTube sensation Grace Helbig is a must-have must self-help comedy book. Filled with life stories and funny anecdotes, the book is an interactive experience, helping to show people how to transition into adulthood with anagrams, worksheets, and helpful tips and tricks that are fueled by her unique brand of humor. This is an amazing read and very interesting because you don't have to read the book, this book in order in any way, shape, or form. Our next book is Viv Albertine's Clothes, Music, and Boys. The second choice for book of the year is Viv Albertine's Clothes, Music, and Boys. It's an amazing read that showcases the rise of one of the punk rock scene's most influential figures and offers a never-before-seen look into the movement from a female perspective. Told in her unique, whole no bars voice, this book is an in-depth representation of punk rock and the movement that inspired future generations. If you'd like to see our full review of this book, make sure you go to our uh, magazine's website, there you'll find all our latest reviews, including the Albertines' Clothes, Music, and Boys. Our next book for pick for Book of the Year has got to go to Girl Online. Zoe Suggs, a.k.a. Zoella's first foray into the world of writing made her one of the top-selling novelists of the year. A unique work of fiction, the book follows an online personality that navigates the world of online social media, fame, and love as she deals with anxiety and the problems most young people face in this day and age of technology and the internet. Filled with intrigue, drama, and a unique voice only the mind of internet sensations Zoella could capture, this is a great read and a must-have book. Our final pick for book of the year it goes to Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. The master of suspense and horror showcased his incredible genius once again this past year when he released Mr. Mercedes. The story follows a retired homicide detective who is feeling the depression and restlessness that comes with retirement. 
When the one case he couldn't solve, the murders of several people by a maniac who ran a group of job hunters over with a Mercedes, comes back to haunt him by way of the killer reaching out to him. The retired detective finds himself back on the case, looking into the murders once again, without any backup from the law. The entire book was truly a great murder mystery, with a brand new dark and demented villain that only Mr. King could bring to life. And the characters in this story prove that not all of the heroes are the big-muscled or scantily clad kind of heroes, but ordinary people who come together to protect others no matter the cost. That is the end of our book section for the best of list of 2014. Now on to music. One of the top songs for us this year was Hosier's Take Me to Church. The gray reality embedded in the song is matched by the dark tones and amazing vocals throughout the song. Taking a stance against organizations such as religion or politics and their views on sexual orientation and being sinful, the song is an anthem of humanity, telling us all to embrace one another through an act of love and accept each other no matter what the big organizations try to say. It's a great message of love and an amazingly creative and beautiful song. The next song to make our list was Ed Sheeran's Make It Rain. A deeply moving song that sprang from the partnership between legendary musician Ed Sheeran and his love for the hit series SOA, this song came in towards the end of the seventh and final season. Originally used by Northern Irish singer Foy Vance, Sheeran got the approval to record his version of the song, with the opening lyrics, When the sins of my father weighed down in my soul, drawing a correlation for the singer with SOA. The lyrics are powerful, and the gritty tempo and beat of the song makes it an easy contender for top song of 2014. One of the best albums this year has got to be Maroon 5's. Their album, V, or 5, however you look at it. Um, the album is full of beautiful music, upbeat music, sad music, and even creepy and dark music. I'm looking at you, Animals, by Maroon 5. Lead singer Adam Levine has put his theatrical and emotional tone to great use on this album which is fueled by amazing guitar riffs, heart-pounding drum work, and soulful bass tones, bass tones. Uh, the album proves that the band is in top form and shows no signs of slowing down. Another amazing album this year was from Slash and Miles Kennedy's World on Fire. One of the world's most legendary guitarists returns with a vengeance with Miles Kennedy and his band, The Conspirators, to bring a captivating rock album that's full of heart, passion, chills, and at times, pure terror that evokes a feeling that you have returned to the days when today's classic rock was in its prime, and was so intense that fans could use the phrase, melt your face off, when describing the music. For more on this great album, check out our full review on our website. Our next choice for music has got to be Godsmack's 100 HP. Oozing with classic tones that fans of Godsmack have grown accustomed to, the album is full of raw and powerful music, whether it's the punk rock and raw feel of the title track, 100 HP, or FML, or the epic and artsy songs like Generation Day and Nothing Comes Easy. The entire album is unique, and is the result of a huge collaborative process in which the entire band came to the table with their own songs and working together, brought forth an incredible album that is unlike anything else that has emerged from the rock world of 2014. Our final choice for music of 2014 has got to go to Matt McAndrew on NBC's The Voice. Although McAndrew did not win this past season of NBC's The Voice, uh, he was a runner-up from Team Adam, 
and was nothing short of spectacular. He was our personal first choice for winner of the show. Something about the way this incredible artist performed each week and brought what the coaches would no doubt deem Grammy-winning performances made this artist stand out above and beyond the rest of the competition. His renditions of songs such as The Blower's Daughter, Take Me to Church, and Make It Rain were so well done that you would have thought that his original they were his original pieces of work. We are looking forward to seeing what not only what this artist produces in the album department this year, but what the entire year will bring us from Matt McAndrew, who is one of the best emerging artists of 2014. Now, that is the end of our music section. To end this best of list and this podcast, I'd like to turn to the world of YouTube. The first thing I'd like to discuss is the rise of a lot of successes for the UK YouTubers. In this, I'm talking about Zoe Sugg and Alfie Day celebrating book releases, Zoe Sugg and Tanya Burr releasing successful makeup lines, and more. Uh, Zoe re- and Alfie Days both release books, Zoe releasing Girl Online, and Alfie Days releasing The Pointless Book, an interactive book experience. Zoe Book's book um, actually reached uh, very huge numbers, making her one of the top writers of the year. Miss Sugg and Tanya Burr released their own makeup lines as well. And other YouTubers, including Miss Burr, have gotten book contracts in 2014, which will see them release in 2015. There's a whole slew of... Uh, Compliment accomplishments from across the pond. So that's why I felt like it was important to group all these amazing YouTubers together in one category. The UK YouTubers had a huge year in 2014, and 2015 is only going to increase that for them. And we here at Iron Press Magazine are deeply excited to see what that brings. Our next pick for YouTuber of the Year goes to Grace Heldig. 2014 was a huge year for the internet sensation. The year began began with the start of her own channel, It's Grace, after her contract ended with My Damn Channel, and her channel, Daily Grace, stopped airing. Surging to over 1 million subscribers incredibly quickly, the year also saw the release of a feature film starring Grace with her friends Hannah Hart and Mamrie Hart, a popular podcast called Not Too Deep with Grace Helbig, and a New York Times best-selling book called Grace's Guide, The Art of Pretending to be a Grown-Up. Hubbard's accomplishments have proved, helped prove that the biggest video-based social media platform is a great avenue to discover future generations of entertainers and creative visionaries. Our next pick has got to go to Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson is the YouTuber who, divided, who dived headfirst into Hollywood, held his head up high, and directed and starred in his first feature film length, length film. The film, Not Cool, won over the hearts and minds of people both accustomed to his unique humor on YouTube and new audiences around the country. The film was such a hit that Dawson won the hit stars competition, The Chair. Dawson also had a great year with his, pod, his hit podcast, Shane and Friends, and appeared on the cover of Variety magazine with Jenna Marbles. It was a hit year for Mr. Dawson, who seems poised to dominate 2015 as well. Another great success this year was from Chester C. He made a huge splash on the world of Broadway this year. After co-starring in Camp Dakota with Grace Helbig, the incredible musician found himself taking on the role of Stacey Jacks in Broadway's Rock of Ages showcasing his wide range of talent as both an actor and musician. Our next pick goes to Tyler Oakley. From hosting live red carpet events, raising serious funds for an amazing charity called The Trevor Project, accepting Teen Choice Awards and Streamies, having his own live show, and even getting FaceTime with President Barack Obama, Tyler Oakley has been everywhere in 2014 and is one of the most watched entertainers on the internet. 
Our next performance of the year goes to Hannah Hart. On top of co-starring in Camp Dakota and meeting President Obama in 2014, Hannah Hart also released a parody self-help book titled My Drunk Kitchen, A Guide to Eating, Drinking, and Going with Your Gut, and even appeared on the hit series Epic Rap Battles of History alongside Grace Helbig. Of course, following Hannah Hart has got We Have to Pick Mamrie Hart. On top of enjoying success on her own channels and co-starring in Camp Dakota, Mamrie Hart announced the impending release of her own book in 2015 and co-starred with Hannah Hart and Grace Helbig on a series of live shows called The No Filter Show, hashtag No Filter Show. She even had a short run uh, of live shows with Grace Helbig uh, in which they performed a live series called This Might Get Weird, Y'all. Our final performance on YouTube from 2014 goes to Miranda Slings slash Colleen, Colleen Ballinger. On top of a year of touring as the character Miranda Sings, Colleen, Colleen Ballinger enjoyed success on YouTube with both her Miranda Sings channel and her personal channel. She appeared as Miranda on Jerry Seinfeld's show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, then went on to appear on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon alongside Seinfeld and Martin Short. This made her one of the top YouTubers and overall entertainers of 2014. That does it here for us on for uh, the Weekly Riff. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, episode number two. Uh, this is going to be a weekly series at least, um, as indicated by the title. Uh, not every week is going to be a best of, of course. Uh, each week we're going to talk about anything in the world of entertainment. And I hope you'll join me every week as uh, we dive headfirst into all the latest breaking developments. I'll have reviews of shows for you guys, reviews of music, um, you know, music video, reactions, um, pretty much anything. This is a No Limits type of podcast, and I encourage you guys to leave your comments and thoughts on both this video on YouTube and on the podcast itself, telling me what you think, what you'd like to hear in this podcast, um what your thoughts on what we've discussed in this podcast are. Just And if you have questions, feel free to leave them, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys for joining me for today's On Request Magazine Presents The Weekly Riff with me, Anthony Avina. And I will see you guys next week for a brand new uh, podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Good night. Have a great week. And I will see you for the next episode. This is Anthony Avina, signing off. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.